Okay, my friends, uh, welcome to a little chat on the reflected best self. Talk about this in terms of helping us build personal leadership strength from positive feedback. You should have by now downloaded the, um, the student version of this so that you can um, begin to collect your stories of your best self. The second slide here just uh, shows a picture of the exercise and the third slide is actually the website where you will purchase your uh, version of the Reflected Best Self exercise. Now, why would we want to learn more about the best version of ourself? The fact is that by leveraging the best version of ourselves, we can really become more engaged and empowered leaders. On slide four, you'll see um, a little uh, picture of some of the reasons why the Reflected Best Self is the is the powerful tool that it is. You can see that um, in one, uh, the upper left side there, that what you what what you're doing is creating a process that builds connection. It gives others a chance to give a gift to you, and it reveals your openness and vulnerability. Um, it can be somewhat stressful asking people to tell you uh, about when they've seen you at your best. Um, number two is the reappearing uh, process and it makes more visible uh, those uh, to whom you are interdependent. You'll see as you as you create the list of the 10 to 20 people that you want to give you feedback on your reflected best self that these are the people that are really meaningful in terms of your relationships. In the lower left side, you see number three, generating positive emotion. And we know that generating positive emotion is tied to um, higher levels of motivation. It broadens your attention, it builds social resources, and unleashes intellectual resources. Pretty awesome. In uh, slide four, you'll see uh, the idea of an accurate core diagnosis, getting an image of the possible self that is built on real data. So as you ask people to reflect on the best self, you'll um, also remember these times when um, uh, you were really at your best. So you become a social architect, making con connections, uh, finding situations, and um, seeing opportunities for your own f future growth. And as this, it is you as a gift to the world. Pretty awesome, and indeed, it is an exercise that time and again, when I've used it, has uh, uh, made for substantial change. In, uh, in people. It's, uh, it's quite enlightening. Uh, slide four talks about the reflected best self exercise. And, uh, and here you'll see at the top that uh, it's providing the opportunity to identify your personal strengths and capability add value to work organizations and the the most specific work organization that we have now is obviously the corporate teams. From here as you work uh, in um, parallel in developing your personal leadership plan you can create personal and career development plans and you're doing this based on the best self feedback. And you'll also understand the types of situations that bring the best out of you and when you are really able to bring the best out of others. So what will you do? The procedure will involve gathering feedback on 10 to, from 10 to 20 individuals who know you well and, and will be honest. Don't be intimidated about the 10 to 12. For uh, some people that are introverted, such as myself, it's hard to get to number 10. Um, but indeed, you can find the more people you have, the, the better. But um, if you have a smaller list, that's okay too. You're going to ask them to describe three instances when they saw you at your best. 
And then you're going to search for common themes across stories to discover how you add value. And then you'll compose and revise a reflected best self that you will integrate into um, some of the reflections you're doing uh, for this course and then as well into the, uh, the presentations as well. The next slide deals with the distinguishing features of the reflected best self exercise. Remember that it's not the best, but your best, that you're looking at um, uh, getting feedback from multiple groups, so not just people that you've worked with or not just uh, family members, but a whole range of people. You're looking for stories, not checklists, and this is important because the narrative helps you see uh, and uncover um, levers for strengths and um, also the themes. You're looking at just strengths, not weaknesses. And sometimes this can be um, a little bit trying because you're asking people to tell you good things about yourself and when you've been at your best. And very often we are sort of culturally um, more uh, open to hearing about hearing the bad news rather than the, uh, the good news. It, is decouples evaluation from development and what this means is that you're getting these stories on your best self but people aren't telling you what you need to do more of it that's that's the plan is up to you and it's a structured opportunity for affirmation it's a structured way of finding um, positive uh, th things about yourself the next side looks at uh, what you are at your best and here you'll see that we're looking at the situational attributes that those those situations when you are at your best where we can see a, um, a combination of your strengths at work um, that you did something good for other people that's the um, constructive experience for others and that it was a positive experience for you so you see where the star is there that is this kind of sweet spot of when you are at your best and others see you um, at your uh, best so what is the what is the, your best self it's more than positive or strong skills and traits often results from a combination of strong straits. It's primarily a social rather than individual phenomenon. Okay, so this really goes back to um, one of the major uh, building blocks in our course is that leadership, in fact, is lived in situations. You can't be a good leader, a great leader in isolation. So it's this idea of leadership being other-centered. And it is um, uh, the, le the leadership, positive leadership, is this experience that we create for ourselves and for others. The next couple of slides deal with uh, the kind of background on strengths that we'll talk about more in, uh, in class. And... Um, uh, uh, competencies uh, view of uh, uh, develop of development. Um, I'll just go through those quickly. So the next slide is a competency view of development. Um, we're looking at skills and capabilities that are required to perform effectively. We want to equip individuals with task or job success. When we look at the best self, we're really going on beyond just equipping yourself for a task or success. It's equi equipping yourself for a way of being in the world. So we're not, we're doing more than just creating a list of competencies, measuring performance gaps, and then reducing those performance gaps. The assumptions in the competency approach are that we need to work on weaknesses and that being well-rounded is important. Now, where we go with this course is very different from this competency-based approach. We're not creating a checklist. What we're interested in doing is finding out what we're good at and getting great, finding out where we're great and going to even higher levels 
um, of, of effectiveness. And this is at the core of the strengths-based approach that uh, is introduced to you in slide 10 here and that we'll talk about continually as a theme in our course as um, we move uh, through our work together on Friday mornings. So on uh, slide 10 you see defining strengths qualities and capabilities that you possess that enable you to be cons to consistently produce desired results these involve talents core competency bring your personal values into play and also uh, engage your identity okay so it's it's a much more holistic view of who you are as an, an individual and in fact a much more empowering view of um, who you are as an individual. So let's talk a little bit more about the strength based view of development. Um, what we're looking at here in slide 11 is a developmental aim, aim of unleashing distinctive human capabilities. We are engaged in a process to unearth how you are experienced at your best yourself by yourself and by others we want to extract and distill a core set of attributes tendencies and enablers so in fact we're giving you a way to process the world so you can find ways in which you can um, always operationalize and work from your strengths. So you're looking for those niches or opportunities where you are most engaged and empowered. So look a little uh, for a little bit at the assumptions here and what you'll see is that um, first of all each person's great greatest room for growth is in the areas where they have unique strengths and talents. Improving in areas of weakness enables people to meet performance standings, whereas uh, standards, whereas building on strengths creates the pathway to excellence. So it's this creation of the pathway to excellence that we um, are concerned with. Slide 12 deals with some of the um, obstacles to strength based approach. Uh, very often, in talking about what we're great at, we feel self-centered. It does run counter-cultural, many cu cultures um, and, and family cultures as well as uh, national cultures emphasize humility and we're talking about really being engaged at the other end of that uh, continuum in, in starting to really understand what we're great at. Also, we're used to hearing the bad news rather than the good news about ourselves and we're used to asking for that so we um, very often people are unused to giving positive feedback and we also are not used to asking for positive uh, feedback so we're going to work on changing that um, a little and this doesn't me mean that you um, are going to be engaged in lying to people. In fact, what we're trying to do is develop a important leadership skill in helping to helping other people to identify what they are really doing well. And we may have some certainty either as to whether your best self is what is valued or appropriate. You may run into a situation where, and this this will happen likely with quite a few of us, where when we uncover our best self and where we are most engaged in um, in the world, we find that perhaps what we had hoped to do as a as a career doesn't fit with what this this feedback is, and and we can. Um, you know, talk about that uh, individually and as uh, as a group. We may feel a little bit of a role entrapment that, uh, for example, for myself, that I need to, I'm at my best when I'm I'm helping others. So, what does that mean for um, how an introvert operates uh, in the world 
where much of her energy and strength happens from engagement with uh, other people. So you need to be able to work through all aspects of who you are as an individual. So slide 13 deals with um, reflected best self and self-discovery and um, we're looking at mostly um, trying to fuel up on the enabling resources here. So the jolt really is um, what you uh, get from uh, getting this positive feedback and uh, it sh it'll fill you with these positive emotions. You'll feel really much more attracted to the people you get this feed from and feedback from and it gives you a sense of positive agency that you can make change, that you do make a difference. And so this is why we are hoping to take what we get, um, the, the stories from um, the people that we asked to uh, report on our uh, best selves and make positive change, um, lifting our leadership to an even higher level. Slide 14 gives you a, um, an example of the reflected best self uh, portrait and um, this was built out of uh, 90 examples and um, this is what the person wrote. When I'm at my best, I tend to be creative. I am enthusiastic about ideas and craft bold visions. I'm an innovative builder who perseveres in the pursuit of the new. I do not waste energy thinking about missed opportunities and past failures, nor do I take on the negative energy of insecure uh, of the insecure or worry about criticizing. Now you'll see later on in the last paragraph there it talks about in exercising influence. Make special note of that because we're you you'll, you also have your strengths finders results, and that refers to. Strengths finders results where you'll see that you have strength in ex executing relationship building, influencing, and um, and uh, being strategic. Um, you may be reflected in all four of those or only in uh, a few of those. So in building your reflected best self portrait, you want to inter integrate your uh, Gallup results. Uh, on your um, your strengths. Okay, so the next few slides um, are focused on how you'll go about building, uh, uh, completing the reflected best self exercise. So the first thing you need to do, this is slide 15, is identify potential respondents. So you're looking at 15 to 20. The more you have the 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 easier it is for you to, to begin to identify uh, themes. You want to choose people who have seen you at your best and people who will give you an honest opinion. And what you will find is that people are quite willing to um, participate in this exercise with you. Okay, so in slide 16, we look at the um, what sending out the request for the reflected best self. And in fact, in your um, resources, you'll see that there is an example of a letter that you could edit easily. You want to make it real and from yourself in sending out the request for the reflected best self. And also what I found with mine is if people don't want to or can't um, seem to come up with three stories, take what they have and do so with gratitude because they're really um, investing in your um, uh, leadership. So slide 16, compose the story request and you, you will have an example of that. There are many ways to solicit and gather the feedback. Um, one thing that is suggested in the resources is that you look at the uh, people who uh, uh, are on your email lists and pick a few in different categories, friends, 
families, co-workers, past workers, people that you've worked with, volunteered in the community. So you get a range of uh, people there. Slide 17 gives you uh, Sean's sample email request. Uh, feel free to edit that. That's a nice starting point for you there. You'll see in slide 18 that uh, there are also some um, examples uh, given. You could do this um, as well. Use these examples if, if you like um, so that people know what you're uh, looking for. Okay, so you've got a list of 10, 15, 20 people. You've asked them for three stories each. You've edited Sean's letter. You've given them examples. Now it's time for you to think a little bit about when you think you are at your best. And in slide 19, you'll see there that what we want you to do is write your own uh, best self stories. Again, try to get three from different aspects. Maybe it's a sports team, um, something you did in customer service, something you did for a friend or a family member, and it's something that gave you a lot of positive emotions. Okay, remember here that that's really one of the keys. We're looking for those positive emotions. Slide 20 gives you an example of um, one of the uh, reflected best self uh, uh, stories. Under the star, your turn, see there that um, reflect about times when you were and normally are at your best and capture the stories that exemplify that time uh, in, uh, in the same space, document and or file that you will eventually uh, house the stories that you receive. Uh, one of the things they suggest here is that you practice your spreadsheet um, skills here. And I think it's a good idea because you can start to sort through these stories by theme and uh, almost do a little bit of a content analysis here. Okay, so on to slide 21 and analyzing all your best self stories. You're going to collect and aggregate the data, read and reflect on each story. And you see in the next slide a table um, that notes some key insights. So let's go to slide 22. And you see here that um, the way that they've constructed this this um, uh, table is story authors, so you have from uh, different aspects of your life, positive behaviors. Okay, you're looking at for positive behaviors. So the work colleague emphasized enthusiasm, facilitation, persistence. The friend, persistence again. The boss, relationship building, optimism. So you're getting a sense of how uh, this individual is uh, is attitudinally when they're at their uh, at their best. And then you have persistence when in the story theme and personal declaration. Okay, so the personal declaration is a very important part here. That's um, in column three there. I am persistent and can facilitate and motivate others. Okay, this is giving yourself positive affirmation from the friend. I help people in trying times. From the boss, I can envision how things might look. So make this these columns in your spreadsheet and don't be shy about talking about when you have done something um, great and extraordinary and very getting very specific in identifying when you do something well. Slide 23 talks about aggregating the stories, um, uh, sorry, analyzing the stories in aggregate. So after you have thought deeply about each of the stories, look for patterns and themes, recurring behaviors. And you see that if you go back to 22, that's really what's happening in the story theme and personal declaration uh, there. 
So then in 24, we get another table on patterns, declarations, and examples. This is another way of looking at the data, and it's worthwhile spending some time here. So you see in patterns and themes that you're beginning to develop a lexicon of terms that describe who you are as an individual. Here, I think we can call this person Sean. Sean is persistent and empowering. Declaration. I believe in working towards excellence and will work through any difficulties to produce the outcomes I seek. Okay, so this is a very valuable statement here because it is something that you could then translate to a job interview. You can you have examples of when you were persistent. You can make this declaration, and then you can see in the last column there that you can talk about um, the uh, examples if you were in in a job interview. So this is uh, very exp um, important and down to earth um, uh, type of work that you're doing here. That will be really helpful as you move out into your uh, your your work life and, and leadership there as well as in all other important parts of your life. Slide 25 talks about the step five of composing the reflected best self portrait. You're going to create a portrait of your best self that captures the wisdom in your personal and reflected best self analysis. So it's an aggregated articulation of your personal and reflected best self, which you can refer to and revise well into the future. It should synthesize the themes and declarations. So what you um, gather from the preceding uh, slides and um, what you have begun to um, create in the Excel spreadsheet on your reflected best self and, and your leadership really become useful tools and you can add to those. So you're creating a written narrative. You could also create media uh, for the reflected best self portrait and you could upload this onto your um, ePortfolio, which would also um, really be helpful for um, your future progress. Okay, so slide 26 is um, giving you Sean's version of his reflected best self portrait. I'll let you read through that on your own. Slide 27 uh, begins with the next phase, like the so what. Okay, so I've got this reflected best self portrait. I know when I'm at my best. I know that I'm optimistic and persistent. So what do I do? And what you're going to do is begin to enact that in all of your relationships. So you need to uh, think about how the knowledge will enhance your quality of life, how you can incorporate in your current job, incorporate this in your current jobs, relationship, for future career planning. How you can identify situations which will contribute maximal, maximally uh, to uh, your uh, leveraging your strengths, and how do you manage your limitations? So, we need to look at what enablers and blockers uh, there are here, and. Um, we talk about that in terms, for example, in enablers and blockers, including attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors that affect your, affect your ability to leverage your best self in a given context. So how, for example, is your belief in your ability to contribute in class correlated with how often you choose to uh, do so? Those are personal enablers. The next are relational enablers. Okay, those relationships that either support or undermine your best self. They give the example of Sean having a sister that's a great sounding board. Okay, so you want to sort of maximize personal enablers. 
So it may be that the, the enabler for somebody that wants to contribute in class and thinks that they really are valuable in bringing others out of their shell, that they work to say, okay, so I'm going to ask this question uh, and then I would like you to follow up with this question or comment. So you could help, if you have a strength in participating in the classroom situation, you can help another person develop that strength. Look for people that are really willing to invest in your success, relational en enablers, and identify the situations that bring out the best in you. Is it a group situation? Is it working alone? How do you minimize blockers and uh, maximize enablers? So there's a caveat that follows here on slide 29 about uh, avoiding over-reliance on our strengths. And it should remind you of the the challenges that can occur when we overplay some of the managerial roles that we talked about in um, in the first uh, workshop. For example, um, if you'll recall, in the yellow collaborative um, quadrant of the competing values framework, there are two um, there are two roles: um, the mentor and the facilitator. If the facilitator role is overplayed, that it, that individual can become very weak and um, simply begin um, allowing anybody to do um, anything. And in fact, what that can mean is that the the person who is overplaying the facilitator role is actually um, undermining their own personal values. Likewise, in the red quadrant, you have the uh, monitor and um, uh, coordinator role. If somebody overplays those red roles, they can become very close-minded and, uh, and oppressive. So let's move on to, si to slide 29 and have a look at what we're talking about here in terms of overplaying our strengths. So you'll see here, for example, um, when they talk about track record, sources of initial success, um, makes an impressive impact in functional and technical error, er, in a functional or technical technical area. What we're getting at here is okay. So you have to be able to get outside of your of your comfort zone. If, you, if, if because you're great in a particular uh, functional area or technical area, doesn't mean that you have to simply stay within there. You don't want to be too narrow. Narrow. And I know this applies to all of you. You're seen as uncommonly brilliant. But know that that can become intimidate, intimidating, that people, that you can become a little bit dismissive of other people's ideas. And likewise with charm, those people that have the uh, woo factor as one of their strengths, uh, they uh, may become a little bit uh, manipulative uh, uh, with people. So even though we are leveraging our strengths, it doesn't mean that we're not going to pay any attention to our weaknesses. Uh, in, in fact, slide 30 uh, talks about this. And the idea here is that you have to have a level of competence. But also understanding that an area is weak means that you have to reach out to others and respect the skills that others have when they are strong in your weak areas. So it's finding someone else uh, to team up with, uh, but also putting enough er um, effort uh, to develop your areas of weakness to an acceptable level of, um, of performance. But again, Look at personal, relational, and situational factors that can be that can operate as levers to build in your strengths. 
don't focus your development plans around backfilling and simply becoming uh, less weak in weak areas. Slide 31 gives you some more um, ways of looking at the data, identifying enablers and blockers. So here we see uh, uh, personal, relational, and situational enablers. Uh, situational enabler, I rise to the challenge in time-sensitive situations. Awesome. I like that um, in myself and in others. Relational, uh, certain people have the ability to help me see differently. Okay, relational blocker, certain people drain my energy regularly. Okay, you need to reflect on this and see how you're going to sort of um, really clear the path to allow those enablers to do their thing in terms of building on your strengths and empowering you and what you can do to avoid or reduce the blockers. So in the situational um, blockers here, for example, it says, I do my best deep thinking when I'm with groups. Idea creation alone is sometimes hard for me. That blocker is completely opposite to the situational blocker that I have. I do my best deep thinking when I am alone. I need that time to develop I ideas. So, it, but I know that I need to also re be relating with other people to check the reality of ideas and to also um, ensure that I'm teaming up with people that will help me make my creative ideas um, a reality. Third blocker there is I have a hard time speaking in front of uh, large groups. Well, there are skills that we can use to help you manage that. You're not alone. Public speaking is one of the most stressful situations for most people. But having a great plan and uh, realizing that people are there to help you be successful are two things to keep in mind as you... Um, as you develop a competency in public speaking. The next slide uh, deals with um, creating an action plan. This is part of uh, really what you want to uh, walk away from uh, this cl class with and build up over the next 16 months via your ePortfolio. So here you can see they talk about the, um, the, the visioning. You will be creating a, a personal vision based on your strengths and uh, some of your personality insights in presenting this. But look at the plan. Okay, things are planned out here. Days, weeks, months, and years. being my best self, and making my best self better. Nice ways to think about this as a sample uh, reflection and also in terms of action planning. So the final slide, slide 33, deals with action planning, and here's what we have. Um, you need to uh, answer the question of how, you, um, how you'll know if you are making progress. Remember that what gets measured gets done. What ev is it evidence will you seek and document? That's where your ePortfolio comes in. What resources will you need to continue to develop? And um, what is your plan for accessing and building uh, these resources? Maximize the enablers, reduce the blockers, and you're on your way. So that's basically um, what we have in terms of the reflected best self. The big thing now is um, to get those requests out for uh, the, the three stories as soon as you possibly can. So plan to, over the weekend, look at the sample of um, Sean's request that's in your uh, resources there. Remember that you're asking for three stories, three short stories from each person. 
get your Excel spreadsheet up and get ready. Write your own story of reflect stories of reflected best self, and you're ready to rock. And I'm here to help you uh, uh, leverage your best self and do a great job in your thinking about your personal leadership this semester. Talk to you soon.